Hello, beautiful people. Tanika Maria back out here. I'm an author, speaker, podcaster, certified Christian life coach, and I love helping high achieving women get real, be healed, and move forward and walk in wholeness, peace, clarity, and wisdom. Wisdom, peace, and clarity is the principal thing. And so I love helping my sisters reach deeper levels of wisdom, peace, and clarity as they transition in, in relationships, life, all kinds of dynamics. And this week, you know, we're going through this series through my book, A Woman's Journey Home, 14 Keys to Ascending to the Next Dimension. If you missed my previous video, go back and catch it because we're walking through the precepts of this book bit by bit and it is powerful. It is powerful. And so this week we're going to dive into we're still kind of in <laughs> chapter two right here, but we're gonna talk about choking down the truth. So we talked about the importance of emotional house cleaning, the importance of like coming home to ourselves, how our heart is our center point, And when the heart is out of alignment, when our emotions are dysregulated, when we're discombobulated, dysregulated, out of alignment, we're huffing, we're puffing, we're doing this, that, and the third, and we're trying to serve. We're trying to do business. We're trying to do business out of this misaligned place, right? We're trying to serve others, serve God, serve our families, and our hearts are misaligned. We haven't done our internal house cleaning. But to do that, we gotta first begin to accept some truth. So we're in chapter two of A Woman's Journey Home. You can grab your copy on Amazon or go to my web website, click the link in my bio, grab your own copy and let's just go into it together. So I'm in this section that says choking down the truth. And I love this quote and I don't know where who it came from, but I have it here in my book. The truth hurts, but doesn't kill. Lies may please, but they don't heal. Let me say that again. The truth hurts, but it doesn't kill. Lies may please, but they don't heal. And there's another quote that I heard somewhere that states, we generally find a lie very palatable and easy to swallow. However, we find the truth to be very bitter and hard to choke down. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's real easy for us to believe lies. We make so many assumptions. We jump to a lot of conclusions. We have a lot of negative ruminations. We do a lot of comparison and competing out here. We believe lies about ourselves based on our circumstances and our feelings and all the negative thoughts, and we will swallow all the lies. But we have a hard time choking down the truth. And even if the truth is painful, you know, and most of the time it is, but it's the truth that's going to heal us. It's the truth that redeems us. It is the truth that once we've accepted it, we're, we're expanded, we're better, we're healed for it. And so let me keep, keep reading here. Yet we read clearly in the scripture about how the God we serve is a God of truth. There is no lie in him. As a matter of fact, those of us who claim to follow Christ have literally surrendered our lives to the way of truth. We read in John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. We read earlier that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. And so truth on the inside, truth has to be deeply implanted in our hearts before we can really know wisdom. And once we have truth about ourselves, God, how we see ourselves, who we really are as women, that we are truly accepted in the beloved, that we are forgiven, that we are deeply loved, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that yes, there are some things I need to rewire in my thinking. Yes, there are some areas in my heart. Yes, I've said and done things I shouldn't have done. Yes, all of that is true. But now that I know the truth, I am responsible to apply that truth to my life. How many of us hear a truth, but we don't embody the truth? How many times we hear it and we know it in our heads, but it hasn't sunk down into our heart? But truth, and I'm reading from my book again, this is chapter two. Truth once heard, swallowed, and received into the heart has a profound life-altering effect. Once you have received truth, you can never go back to being the same. Take a moment 
and get a visual of a totally stretched out rubber band in your mind. Think about this rubber band. It's totally stretched out. It's beyond its capacity. Once that rubber band has been stretched beyond its original capacity, it can never shrink back to being the same. The truth has a similar impact upon our souls once it is deeply received. Once you receive truth in your soul, your, your soul can't go back to the way it was. Once you know that the truth about your situation, where you are in life, what's going on and what's up, once you really, really face that, you can't go back to being the same. It's going to be very, very difficult. Facing and receiving the truth about where we are, how we got there, what we are doing in our lives, what we have done, the status of our relationships, our body temples, our purpose is the very first and most important step to coming home to ourselves and coming home to God. I can't sit here and talking about a, talk about a new level for 2023 if I haven't come home to truth, if I haven't gotten back down to the base, if I haven't gotten my grounding and traction. You can't do anything on a basis of a lie. You cannot promote any business, any ministry, any God idea, any purpose without the foundation of truth being first established. Receiving truth is the process of letting go of all, all the lies we swallowed along the way in our struggles to cope with life, to go along, to get along, to not feel pain, and the lies we believed to, in order to make things happen in our own strength. So in facing truth, the first thing we want to do is simply to face the good truth. And I love this quote by Plato. And those of you who have listened to me for any length of time, you know it's one of my favorites. An unexamined life is not worth living. So first of all, I want you to take a moment and examine the good things you've accomplished so far in 2022. I want you to pause and reflect over your life and write down five, ten things that you've done that you are proud of. When you went back to school, when you got your degree, when you completed that course, when you started that program, when you wrote that book, when you lost the weight, when you, when you stepped out and did something that required courage, when you overcame sickness, unemployment, job loss, abandonment, rejection, and you're still in your right mind. All of those things are worthy to be celebrated. Because this too is an important part in facing and acknowledging truth. It's saying, yes, God did it then and he can do it again. And see, let me read this from my book here. This is what it says. This is what I write here. Facing the truth about your accomplishments does several things. 99% of us under celebrate. Say under celebrate. We under celebrate. We don't properly thank God or acknowledge ourselves for the hard won victories we have gained over the years. We work and sweat. We struggle and toil. We fast and pray. Then the big thing happens. We do it. We post our pictures on social media. We bask in all of the likes and hearts. And then over the span of that typical Instagram post, the typical Facebook post is only a hot for a few hours. And then you you know, we soak in that a little bit and then we push right on past. You need more than that. We fail to allow our souls to actually sit in and soak in the moment. We don't evaluate. We don't reflect enough. Our souls never get a chance to gain the insight, the lessons learned, to really sit and acknowledge ourselves and catch up with all that we completed, all that we've accomplished. And we don't we never fully nurture and savor the joy that completion brings. There's a joy that completion brings. Have you really celebrated the completions and the, the things you did complete, the things you did accomplish in 2022? This is so important. Because awareness and acknowledgement and documentation, that means writing it down, seals and memorializes the wins in your soul. This comes in handy when you're on the battlefield of life, ascending to your next level, woman of God, and the enemy wants to whisper in your ear all of the ways in which you failed, all the ways where you're not good enough, all the times where you messed up and made a mistake. You go back and you pull out those accomplishments, you pull out those completions, and you remember remind yourself of what God did. You remind yourself of what you accomplished. It comes in handy when all of your shortcomings and failures start coming and it starts to whisper that old negative mind chatter. Come on, somebody. 
Don't do a drive-by social media snapshot of your victories and your accomplishments and your completions that you did in 2022. I encourage you to write them down. I encourage you to sit with it. I encourage you to reflect and pray and think on those things. Think on those things. Savor your victories. Amen. That's it for today's nugget from a woman's journey home, 14 keys to ascending to the next dimension. Join me next week and we're going to start talking about something a little bit more challenging. We're going to talk about the next part of this. Be sure to grab your copy. Click the link in my bio. Stay tuned and connected. Hit subscribe. Follow me and let's get in the journey together. And we're going to have some reflective questions. We're going to go all the way through. Hey, why not? Amen. Join me and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.